Hi everyone, today I'm gonna review the performance of the website visitmaldives.com. It's the website you want to check if you want to visit Maldives. I definitely recommend to go there, it's a beautiful place if you want to relax and have a good food and to sit in a warm uh, sea. I definitely recommend this place, it's beautiful. I'm gonna check the website. I have never seen it before, I only check it for the explicit content and uh, I haven't been debugging it yet. So what I like to do before I start any analysis, I'm gonna check how the page feels before I run some checks like Lighthouse and others. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna open the Chrome DevTools and I'm gonna set the network, I'm gonna disable cache, I'm gonna set it to fast 3G and I'm gonna load the page first without any cache. You want to test the website uh, on a slow uh, connection because your customers might want to be in a train, in a bus or somewhere in a public where the internet isn't that fast. And they also might not have that fast internet in the home or that fast devices to process your website. So if you load it on a fast connection, everything is going to be okay. But if you load it on a slow device, the page might be not possible to use. So the head tag, it was like the first block. And what we could see here is there was a white text here and the white uh, menu navigation. And the image loaded quite slowly. So this could be probably improved. Here's another section, uh, some sort of uh, events or promotions or, pro oh, it jumps. Okay, so I'm gonna turn on the layout sheets region. So shifts, and you want to see which part of the page jumps up and down when something loads. You want to use the Chrome layout shift regions viewer so you can Turn it on when you go into the DevTools and you click on the right side on the small button here and you run a command to turn on the viewer of the layout shifts. And when you load the page, like let's check this blog here. This is some uh, offer here. So let's check it. How is it going to load? This is another block of the page. Okay. And you can see these blue regions. It's uh, going to show you that something jumped when image or font loaded or something in the top of the page loaded. Yeah, here something, some live shift. These images are probably going to be huge. They are loading very, very slowly. Let's go next. Another block, some articles, a news. Let's check it out. Okay, so here is a layout shift. Here is a layout shift. Probably some font. And image one, two, three. Yay. Yeah, there you go. So this news, uh, he was a huge layout shift. Every time something actually loads and the page goes, it the browser needs to recalculate literally everything. So this could be improved. Another block, some another news, experiences. Okay, I love these images, they are beautiful. Okay, so another block, let's go. Yay, it was in a grid, now it is from the top to down. Some escaping here, okay. One, two, oof. Okay, this definitely could be improved and something on the top jumped too. So it was a, it is a great, but when the images are not loaded, it's from top to down, and then it, <laughs> it goes back up, it's go back, fine. So this could be improved. Another block. So it seems they probably have some, one component they use, they probably change through some properties or something, because it behaves exactly the same Wow, and a newsletter. Yay, nope, not yet. Yeah, so it pro this one is probably going to be the same component they use up there. 
Islands, okay. Unblock, let's check it out. Okay, this is slowly fine. This is not. I wonder what sort of a font this is. Blinks when slowly. Okay, I can't. Oof, oof, and the newsletter. Wow. Nope, not again. So, another block. Fine, so this is some sort of a places block. Let's check it out too. One layout shift, second, oof, and I'm surprised that they don't have any cookie that they showed the newsletter. It would be probably better if the customer is on the page, show him the newsletter and then don't show it again if he, for example, closed that. Okay, and the footer block, this one. Okay, these images are loading instantly. This description of the one is blurred, so it's probably not even SVG. And they will definitely be quite huge because they are loading again in the parts. So and there was some layout shift. I don't know what exactly happened. So let's check it out. Let's check Lighthouse, what Lighthouse will tell us. I'm going to check first the uh, mobile phone. A lot of the customers today come from the mobile phone. They are in a train and a bus. And when you want a fast page, you want to be fast on a mobile phone. There probably can be even a restaurant. And if there's a lot of people in the restaurant, the, the internet there is probably going to be slow. And in e-commerce, it's like 60% of people is on the phone and 40% is on the desktop. And even in offices, a lot of people works from office. And if it is, for example, in a government job, they doesn't have exactly fast internet there. So you want the page to be fast on a mobile phone first. Okay, 50%. Largest contentful paint, 5.7 seconds. First contentful paint, 4.1. Total blocking time, speed index. Okay, so uh, the largest contentful paint is like the number one you want to focus on when you optimize the page. It's the first block or something the customer is going to see and you want to load it as fast as possible. The rest of it can be lazy loaded or delayed. The page, you can see there's a lot of you know, white parts and there was nothing, nothing, nothing. And then boom, a white text and then the image. Render blocking resources, okay. This is probably going to be in the head tag. And the blocking resources, it's always a pain to optimize. Reduce JavaScript execution, wow. 2.5 seconds. <laughs> jQuery. <laughs> okay. But the size images. Yeah, these images, uh, images are always a pain. Uh, what I like to do is to load images and cut them on after 200 pixels. So on a phone, it's going to be like, 400 pixels, then it's going to be 600 pixels wide, then 800 pixels, 1000, and so on, so on. So the customer, when he loads it on the phone and he, he knows to it uh, on the horizontal position or he has a wider phone, so they don't get a 5 megabyte image for the desktop on the phone. If image is in next gen, probably there's going to be a lot of JPEGs, yeah. One JPEG, second, third, okay. So almost all is a JPEG and one PNG here. Logo, okay. Largest content for paint. Yeah, it's not showing me even the reduce JavaScript. Okay, so let's check the HTML code first. Let's start with the head tag. Uh, when the customer visits your page for the first time, he wants to see that something is actually loading. So you want to show him the title tag information, for example, our page or the title of the page. And then you want to show him the favicon so he knows that something is loading, something is happening on the page. And basically the order of the head should be encoding. They have it correctly set, right, the first. Uh, then they have the VF port, so the browser knows what he should load. And then the title tag, okay. This probably the, CC, the token should be behind, but it doesn't matter that much. Uh, I can see a favicon icon here in a base64 format. Uh, this, the base64 can help you to load the favicon faster than if, if it would be linked. It's another request to the icon. The favicons are often small and it is a nice touch to improve the perf. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Six style sheets. Am I am I counting it right? Yeah, well, so this uh style sheets. What is here is some all men CSS font awesome, cool, okay. Okay, CS select two, okay, light gallery, and there's another gallery. What I would probably do first is that I would take the CSS that is for the layout that is used on all pages, and there's some dynamic CSS one to seven. So I would take the layout CSS that is that what is in the layout CSS, and I would put it into the one layout file. Well, the file would be used on all pages. And the rest of them, like for example, these galleries, if they are not on the other page, I would move them into one file. For example, homepage CSS, then I would create another file and like, like article CSS or gallery CSS and load them there separately. It can improve cache and it definitely will decrease the amount of requests on the page. And these two galleries, I would probably get rid of one of them the light gallery i don't know if it have like a dialogue style but the sweet r has and a lot of the dialogue styles can be moved to native element dialogue and it works it can be small and it looks good actually nothing 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 okay analytics analytic codes should be always before the head and so it doesn't block a loading of anything else there's some static Twitter and there's some token. Okay, fine. So they are using Laravel. Fine. I haven't seen the LCP element, but I guess it's gonna be this uh, wrapper. This one, it's gonna be a slider. Okay. Ooh, gallery. Fine. So here, uh, I don't know what sort of a gallery it is, actually. I can see any framework here. They're probably using something, I don't know what it is, but they are loading images in the gallery through the style tag. You don't want to do this. Uh, it's uh, it's easy because you can say like, this is going to be the background image and let's scale it up to all sides. But you can use an image tag and you can use object position, top, left, right. And you can say object uh, fit. Or object size and you can tell it if it should be like scratched all over the place or if it should fit into the VF board but you can change the priority of uh, the image that is going to be loaded so this should be improved and could be improved very easily you can basically take an image deck uh, set it a fetch priority set it, uh, set it uh, the loading attribute you can give it a position absolute you can make a relative container and load the image pretty quickly. And the uh, priority of those loading tags is going to be much better than these slides here. Indicators. Okay. Another thing that was loading pretty bad was these images here. Yeah, card image top. And it has 277 kilobytes. It's a JPEG. I think that uh, this one, you know, the, on the top of the page, there's some gallery. And here is uh, another gallery. These images should be lazy loaded. You can basically, you know, edit that. This is, for example, an image. Hey, so let's edit it right in the code. You can basically add a fetch priority low and loading lazy. And this is going to tell the browser that the image that is here has lower priority than those images on the top. And so the browser is going to load them after the top images are loaded and only if they are somewhere near to the VF port. It delays loading the native doesn't work exactly as you would want to, like for example, I know 150 pixels before, but it works and you don't have to add any JavaScript. Another thing was that there is a layout shift and the image doesn't have any width and height attribute. The width and height attribute, you can use them to tell the browser what sort of a space, how much space he should basically prepare for the image. 
you don't have to set the exact width and hey the browser the native browser today supports the width and you can say it is going to be one height is going to be one two and one so this works like an aspect ratio and the browser knows that this image is going to be 2.1 image loaded is going to be you know like not correct size so you have to set it in css this image has let's set it to for example hey 50 pixels okay 100 two okay two, that's too much 150 okay 150 150 pixels and now when we actually for example remove the image the, the space here is going to be prepared for him so when I checked the page at the beginning and I scrolled down and these images jumped up and down it was because they have been loading have been but they didn't have prepared the space for them and you, you know where the image is gonna simulate yeah and now it loaded and it didn't jump but if I do this one with the same image as right next to it I'm gonna remove the tag yeah you can see jump up and now reverse that another jump and here if I remove if I set the hey to 150 pixels and I remove the image again yeah it stays so always remember to keep the space for the image that's going to be loaded here in the gallery is gonna probably gonna be the same yeah it's, it's basically the same I think that this entire block like this entire block here should be in the link not only in the image because the customer might want to click on the for example description but that's like accessibility thing so it's their preference okay it's another jpeg and it has 72 kilobytes there is no lazy loading again every image that is not in the vf port like instantly it should be lazy loaded there should be lazy load tag so let's try to optimize this one there was layout shift here so i remove it yeah it's gonna be left side what is this brother have it's gonna be 200 200 pixels so let's prepare the space for it let's say it's gonna be oh they have a max height okay so 200 pixels height is gonna be 200 pixels yeah you know when you have such images in articles you should again add some prepare some space for them if you are worried that there's gonna be like a white blank space and this ugly icon here you can add uh, for example background f1 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 and it's gonna prepare some gray space for it you can also use some animated loader to the css another block was this one okay so this was basically quite interesting because what are they using actually grid sizer i hope it's not true javascript nope it's not okay max height it's like if it would be i hope not i hope it's not calculated through javascript no it seems that it is actually loaded through javascript but this actually it seems that javascript actually changes the style and there's some great sizer i don't know what it actually is but if they actually you know remove this one did they display grid grid template columns yeah like 400 pixels 500 pixels okay it's interesting actually okay and this one it's it's quite weird actually wait 100 maybe yeah so this seems that they are calculating the grid through some sort of a javascript but you can actually do it through pure CSS very, very, in a very, to get a very similar res result, but it's gonna be much more lightweight than through the JavaScript. This is like the grid before, but it's gonna work even without the JavaScript here. And you can probably rem remove the margin here. This block is using the same component we saw it at the beginning of the video. 
here it's probably gonna be again through the javascript i'm gonna turn it on back on so this is probably done through javascript again there's some svg here it's probably rendered through some sort of tool this one actually loaded pretty good but these images loaded very slowly and i don't know what the Okay, so and again the background is a background image, and the background image size is twenty one kilobytes, and it's two hundred fifty five to four hundred pixels. Two hundred twenty. They have it actually quite wide. If I go here, when you have, you know, the space for the image is one hundred sixty pixels wide and 220 pixels on the height and they had the, the image is the double of the size when you if you want some images for retina display you should use picture tag and uh, tell it that this image is for retina through media and not uh, load one giant image so it works on both devices the user that have a small phone and doesn't have retina display isn't going to see that much difference and he's going to get the same image like on the retina but double the size okay let's go next and here one these images i'm pretty sure it's not svg nope and i was right and it's not laser loaded it's png uh the image has wow 56 kilobytes this image could probably i'm pretty sure if i take this image into some optimization tools like squish app for example it would have like half it's white image yeah it's it's not even laser loaded so it could be probably improved like a lot so let's check some other page like stay Is actually is this sticky position is okay so it's fixed but the image under seems to be yeah the image is not okay I'm I wonder why they are loading all these images through the, through the URL. It's you know you can as I said in the previous in the, with the gallery and with everything, you can take the image like this. You can tell that the header is going to be position relative. You can disable the position relative. Relative. Now the image is gone, and I'm gonna edit the HTML here image source and I'm gonna put there the part to the image I'm gonna say fetch priority high loading it's gonna be eager and we loaded this image it's like out of the context right now but I'm gonna set as absolute and inset is gonna be zero yay and I have almost similar result like the previous one but right now I have much better priorities in in order to load these resources of the image I wonder if this one are loaded through the yeah all of them are loaded through the through the background URL how about the font there was a lot of layouts in the font yeah they they are definitely loading some of them outside let's see the css here here is the font okay so they are not even using any web when you want to load the, the font in a bit of a more optimized way you should you load the image with the swap tag this will ensure that the font when it is not found on the page the page will continue to load and then it is going to swap it and the browser is not going to wait on the font so it is not going to be render blocking the page and they are using also a lot of one wolf two of one true type uh you don't need uh 
the WAF2 and you don't need the true type you are probably going to be fine with the WAF the WAF2 it's nice benefit but it has a bit uh, worse support right now probably in the future and uh, they are doing so many fonts here it's unnecessary to even have them there and they are using all possible existing cuts of the font uh, this is uh, you know, when you have a graphic design and you have a really nice design, they, the graphic designers often use a lot of cuts of the font, like 300, wait, 400, 7, 600. But it's going to slow down the page. Even if you base, if you use a base 64 and you have the font directly in the CSS, which is like the best possible way and fastest way to load the font, uh, it's going to be slow because the file is going to be huge, like 300 kilobytes probably even more you can use probably 400 the weight 400 then 700 and that's it you are going to be fine the customer isn't going to see that much of the difference 800 700 another 700 it's like normal yeah it's the font is definitely an issue here okay let's check another one nice nice very nice okay I like the shadow and the blue ones, beautiful. Oof, before. Yeah, they are again using the background image. Let's check how this page actually works in the lighthouse. Let's remove this one. Yeah, 60. Okay, it's better than the primary page. But largest contentful paint, the probably the one I, I'm pretty sure that it's gonna be the, yeah. Yeah, oh, I'm right. Yeah, the top image. As I have been talking about the background URLs, it should be image and image with fetch priority high and loading eager. And you can even improve this if you add a link preload to that image. Definitely going to be a lot of images. Yay, I'm right. Fine. Surfing. Okay. Okay, so this is some sort of a gallery of the part on the primary page. Here was an interesting layout shift. Okay, this is the cache, throttling, fast. And it's gonna be because of the icon, definitely. One, and now the icons. Here we go, yay. <laughs> okay, find icons. When you have an icon font like this one, you, you know, when you have a, this is a icon here. And then you have font, awesome it's gonna you know make these small jumps when you you know this is like if it if the font wouldn't be loaded yet this is one like if it would you can take the icon and you can see that when the icon is loaded it is it has it has about 10 pixels it is 10 pixels wide and 14 pixels high so we can take that and we can again say this is going to be it four pixels hey it's gonna be uh width is gonna be 10 pixels and the height is gonna be 14 pixels. This way we are going to prepare the width and height for the icon. And if I'm not right, yeah, the icon, it's not gonna, you know, jump. And the same, for example, here for the shift, uh, for the search icon in the loaded state, it has 15 pixels and 14 pixels. So width is gonna be 15 pixels and the height is gonna be uh, 14 pixels. Okay, so this is the, loaded icon so if i'm right let's improve it yeah and as you can see now it doesn't jump and if there would be any text it's not going to jump left right left right top bottom and it's gonna be loaded instantly i haven't seen the menu on the mobile phone yet so this is a menu on the mobile phone and i wonder if it is animation or if it is let's open okay and open okay translate find it they have it solved well here uh, when you have uh, such a side uh, menu, you don't want to animate position like left because it's gonna trigger the recalculation of styles and recalculation of the position. So you always want to use translate X and you want to have it, for example, on the left zero. So the menu is in this state in a visible position. When you remove the class, it's gonna transition out. This is good. This is fine. This is good the drop down okay 
Okay, fine. So it's going to be some sort of a JavaScript. Uh, the navigation, this can be, you can remove the entire JavaScript for this part of the page. You can use uh, details and a summary element. And this is going to allow you to create the same effect, but with zero JavaScript. And if you use touch of CSS, it's going to have a nice animation too. For example, GitHub uh, used the same thing. They use it for the filters. Any other page? Like Yeah, this image is probably very huge. What's the size of the image? Where is it? The ground. Okay. 108 kilobytes. Another thing is you can use a WebP, Web, WebP format, work WebP format. I hope I say it right in English. And there's every format. There are these two formats are like uh, half the size of a JPEG in a lot of cases. Okay, stay. I have been there probably. Okay, so last of all, let's check the uh, network connections. Yeah, these icons, I can't see them here. I don't know where they are. Where are these icons? <sighs> wow, probably language. Yeah, these icons here, they should probably be lazy loaded to its image. It should be again a lazy loading. The font one, two, three, four, five. There's four hundred. There's forty-one requests. All of them could be like shrinked together. JavaScript, CSS. Uh, these icons, uh, for example, for maps, uh, you can use uh, fonts that have these icons inside, and they are often very small. Or you can make something like a sprite for them. It's not a fancy way, but it works. It's it's fast. These fonts they should be in the CSS directly. The uh, files and that yeah. Work. Hotels. Let's check this one. Yeah, there's a there's a layout checked gallery actually. Another one. Clear, okay, so let's clear it. Let's see what it is going to do. I think this could be done through Ajax, but it's just a matter of preference. Oh, there was some layout shift. Huh, icon here. So this probably is causing some political trouble. Jump, yay, do it again. The image is here, it loads. Yeah, it's gonna be probably because of the font, yay. Okay, so the image is here, down here, and then it jumps on the end. They use a uh, non-breakable space here, but this isn't, this isn't going to help. It's completely useless. You can basically fix this by display flex. Adding items center and gap, for example, four pixels. Eight, 10, 20, 20. And this is going to work much better. Even is there anything else? Any other page? Travel agents, okay. Hmm, there was some line of shift. Because it jumps. Yeah, it jumps because of the scroll bar here. Uh, so it's gonna load the page. There is going to be a scroll bar. Yeah, there's a scroll bar, scroll bar, and then the scroll bar actually disappears. So it's probably gonna be solved through some sort of a JavaScript or a laser loaded CSS. I'm not actually sure, sure. Loading, loading, loading. And it's gone. And it's changed. Position, it's probably again through a JavaScript thing. So I have disabled the JavaScript and again, the style here kept the same. So it seems and this one is again edited through JavaScript and it is causing a layout shift. They are probably calculating how many texts here, the text they have. And if it doesn't need the overflow is going to be hidden or something. 
I don't know actually what what are they doing here but anyway if you want to solve the similar problem they have here like this there is a scroll scroll bar and we don't want the customer to see the scroll bar you can use two diffs uh, one is with the scroll bar and then there is another diff that wraps this element and the inner diff is actually wider a bit like 20 pixels and I have padding from the bottom and the wrapper is hiding the scroll bar inside and it actually works too you will have a scrollable element to left and right or horizontal or vertical and you don't have the scroll bar there it's like on a macbook very similar and the scroll bar is all gone you don't have to style it Okay, so I can't find uh, any other interesting pages on this website. If you like this video, subscribe. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to review the website of the Iceland where we been uh, last year. It's a uh, nice Iceland. They have a nice website. So make sure to see it. I'll see you in the next video.